Do not spend the 1917 coins that you see in this video because they are selling online for a lot of money and you don't want to accidentally spend one of these coins. Without any further ado, let's just hop right into this video with a 1917 wheat cent coin. Now this coin is very special because of that small S mint mark below the date standing for the San Francisco mint. Now a lot of coins are either going to be struck at the Philadelphia mint, the Denver mint, or the San Francisco mint. And sometimes you'll have a coin that struck at the West Point Mint, but not this specific coin. Another area to pay close attention to is the L in Liberty. Now, this specific coin sold for $6,300. That's a lot of money for this coin. And it was graded by PCGS at a mint state, 65 red. So the L in Liberty, sometimes that can happen. It's a naturally occurring thing that happens during the minting process and happens as a result of a partially grease-filled dye. So the dye that strikes the coin had a bit of grease in it causing this appearance and it does not impact the value whatsoever. The biggest value add here is the condition. Condition is king when it comes to the value of your coin. That's why you should keep your coins very safe. Don't damage them because they could be worth a lot of money just like this coin that sold for $6,300. We'll be quick on this one, but before the Roosevelt dime that we're all so used to seeing, the US produced what we call mercury dimes. Now mercury dimes have a beautiful design on the front and the back of the coin. The coin features a depiction of Liberty wearing a winged cap who is often mistaken for the Roman god Mercury, hence the coin's nickname. If you didn't know, now you know. This specific coin sold for $5,280 because it was graded by PCGS at a mint state 65 full bands. Now a few things I want to talk about on this coin. First of all, flip the coin over to the back, look on the bottom center area of the coin you will see a D mint mark standing for the Denver Mint. Now look at the center of the coin. You can see a hatchet with some horizontal bands. This specific coin got the designation of full bands because those horizontal bands that you see in three different locations are still fully intact. Now it's the highest point on the coin, gets worn down the quickest, and it is very challenging to strike during the minting process. If your coin has full bands and it's in a mint state uncirculated grade, you could get the designation of full bands, which will increase the value of your coin. This one sold for $5,280, $9,900. So pay attention to this coin because it is a pretty small detail that you don't want to miss. This one got graded by PCGS at a mint state 65 red and brown. Now when I say red and brown, I'm talking about the coloration of the coin. These coins can come red, red brown, or brown depending on environmental conditions and the type of metal the coin is struck on. We will show you a quick diagram showing the difference and variation between those coins. Do understand that red coins typically will be worth more money because they are closer to the intended mint state color of the coin. The biggest value add on this coin is the fact that it is a doubled die obverse. Now, obverse means the front of the coin, reverse means the back of the coin. Double die means the die that was striking this coin accidentally struck the hub, causing a doubling happening during the striking of this coin. The areas you want to pay close attention to on your 1917 wheat coin are going to be the date, liberty, and in God we trust. On this specific coin, you're going to mainly see it on the 1917 date there. Because this coin got graded so highly by PCGS, it sold on heritage auctions for $9,900. $6,900 for this 1917 D one cent wheat coin graded by PCGS at a mint state 65 red and brown. Now the first thing you're going to notice on this coin is a crazy coloration toning happening on this specific coin. Now toning is a natural process that happens depending on where the coin is stored and the environmental conditions that coin was stored in. Now we have a beginner to expert toned coin challenge for our members in the Coin Value Club. That is just one of the many things you get while joining the club. If you love coin collecting and you want to be around people that also love collecting coins, especially if you're new, it's a great environment for you to get in and an awesome community where people are very very friendly and welcoming, and there are no silly questions in that group. You can learn more about that by clicking the link down below and joining the Coin Value Club today. But back to this coin that sold for $6,900, it's going to be a combination of the grade and the toning that is causing this coin to sell for so much money. A big thing to also remember is the fact that this coin didn't sell too long ago. So we're making this video in 2024. However, even if you're watching this video 10 years from now, there are still some very valid points and things you should pay attention to 
attention to because the value of this coin could be worth a lot more or a lot less in the future. So market timing is important. One thing I always tell my subscribers is it's impossible to time the market, but you must be okay with selling your coin at a time when you think the market is doing well. I always advise against selling your coin at a market low. The interesting thing is during the 2020 pandemic, a lot of collectors thought the market for coins would tank, but actually the exact opposite happened and there were a ton of coins on the market selling for record prices. That could be the future of a coin like this, but this one sold for $6,900. $14,375 for this 1917D, one cent wheat coin. You can see the D mint mark down below the date. One area I want to look at is the right side of the coin. You can see in the field area or the surface of the coin, there's a bit of blemishing dark areas. That is a natural toning that's happening, but it looks like damage. Some collectors may look at that and think it does not look good whatsoever, and it could decrease the value. However, this coin sold for $14,375. So before the Jefferson nickel, the U.S. produced buffalo nickels. Now this 1917 five cent buffalo nickel sold for $18,600. And if you've seen a buffalo nickel before, you'll know immediately that the coloration of this coin is wrong. That is because this PCGS graded mint state 64 buffalo nickel was accidentally struck on a cent planchet. When I say planchet, I'm just talking about the piece of metal required to produce coins. If you have a buffalo nickel that was accidentally struck on a cent planchet, that is going to be a very rare and valuable coin, and I'm a little bit jealous of you because that is a very cool piece to the collection. Once again, $18,600. $24,150 for this 1917 one cent doubled die obverse coin graded by PCGS at a mint state 66 red. We'll keep it very brief, but this example has a double die obverse. Look at the date there. You can see some very clear and apparent doubling happening as well as in the word we and trust at the top. Very clear there. You may need some sort of magnification to see the doubling happening on your specific coin. But once again, it sold for $24,150. Last but not least, we have this coin that sold for $29,900. It is a 1917 one cent coin graded by PCGS at a mint state 68. Look below the date there. You're going to see no mint mark. So typically speaking, 99% of the time, if your coin is missing a mint mark, that really just means the coin was struck at the Philadelphia mint. Later on in production, the Philadelphia Mint decided to start using a P mint mark standing for the Philadelphia Mint, but for the longest time, they would just use no mint mark at all, which confused a lot of people. But all you need to know here is the reason why this coin sold for nearly $30,000 is because this coin graded at a mint state 68. Now that is only two points away from the perfect grade of 70. That is a very challenging coin to get in that grade. Guys, we did hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about the Coin Value Club, definitely check out the link below. You can learn everything there. The prices will go up in the future, so make sure you grandfather yourself in now because this price will not be around forever. We'll see you in the next video.